Yes, this is Darren Bent, or Benty, as I call him. He's uh, EFL Corner with Carlin when we take a look ahead to this week's football action in the league. Uh, Middlesbrough take on Stoke. It's live on Talk Sport 2 tonight. It kicks off at 8 pm. Now, um, in fact, before I get your view, have a listen to this. Ahead of the match, uh, Carrick has been speaking to the media about how much spirit there is within his players. I think a lot of it comes from, from them. The experience they've had together and grown and, and having results and winning games different ways, going behind, coming back in games. Not ideal, of course, you know, we don't want to keep going behind, but nevertheless, it's it's um, it's nice to have that feeling. If we do, then there's there's a way out of it If um, in, in trusting and believing themselves and real fire within them as a group. It is quite ridiculous what he has done. His yeah. record... I don't think anyone, when he took over... Um, no one could have seen because they. I think he's. I would imagine his brief when he took over was make sure we don't go down. Yeah, it would never ever have been try and get playoff and even go up automatically. The job he's done there has. I think even he will be quite astounded by how successful he's been. Yeah, we've seen it in the last couple of seasons. You look at what um, Steve Cooper did at Forest, bottom three when he got there. That's a great comparison. Get get some promoted, but yeah, what you're talking about: 21 matches, 15 wins, one draw, and five losses for Carrick, and now all of a sudden, look at this Middlesbrough side. Eight wins in the last ten, four points off of second. And when you look at what's coming, Sheffield United play tomorrow against Sunderland away, which is not going to be easy. Mm. And Sheffield United themselves are having a bit of a wobble. But Michael Carrick, even if the worst comes to the worst and Middlesbrough don't get promoted, I think at the start of next season he's going to have Premier League clubs looking at do him. Do you think then. so? Yeah, I do. Okay, could one of those Premier League... Is Spurs a too big a job? Obviously, he's got history there. He's played there. I mean, if someone offers you that, that type of job, I, I think the jump's too big. But if someone offers you that type of job... You can't turn it down because you don't know if it ever come again. Mm. But for sure, if I think if Middlesbrough are not in the Premier League next season, I think Michael Carrick, with the job that he's done, currently sitting third, I I think he'll be in the Premier League regardless next do, year. Do they need to win tonight to really keep their automatic hopes alive? Do you think? Yeah, it's, well, it's a long way to go. There's only four points. As I said, mm. if they win, if they win tonight, that's one point. If Sheffield United lose to Sunderland the way, which could happen, of course looking, it could, yeah, looking yeah. at Sheffield United's form, that's one point, and they've got what. Ten games left of the season. Yeah, yeah, they got easily. They could easily get promoted. A uh, reminder that game Middlesbrough against so it's live on Talk Sport two tonight from eight pm. Um, just ever so quickly sticking with the championship. Actually, there've been uh, there've been plenty of strikers who look to have proven that they can step up into the Premier League. Which strikers jump off the page? I know you're a big fan of. Um, well, I know you like Chu Rackpong. He's top of the, mm-hmm. the charts at the moment. Who else is? Yeah, there's been a few. So I like Chu Rackpong, as you said. There, twenty two goals, the be- the best return he's ever had. In, in professional football there's of course uh, Colton Morris I like him at Luton he's doing mm. really well 15 goals Nathan Teller who I think will play a big part for Southampton Burnley. whatever because he's only on loan from Southampton yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when you look at Southampton's top goal scorers 8 James Ward-Prowse you never know he could have made an impact but the one for me I mean Tom Bradshaw as well I like him at Millwall but I like Victor Gokarez at Coventry he's the one if when you look at Coventry they're ninth. they're what 5 points off of 5th of mm. there's no reason why they can't go for it but he's, he's class he's already matched his total that he did last season, 17. And he's good with assists as well. Good with assists, he's up there. I think he's got seven assists yeah. this season. Yeah. Can score all types of finishes. I mean, you look at his goal against Huddersfield where he goes, he bursts through, keeper comes out, little dink. And then his goal against Millwall where someone, they, they play it into him, uses his strength, he rolls him and just goes poof mm. into the far corner. So I think he is, again, a, a player that if Coventry don't go up this season, I think he'll be he'll be in the Premier League next okay, season. Okay, just a very quick, we'll run out of time, but just a very quick word on Luton and what an amazing job Rob Edwards is doing there. Because we talk about Michael Carrick, mm-hmm. but Luton and Rob go under the radar a bit, don't they? Mate, they, well, so Luton right now are currently fourth. They're three points behind Middlesbrough. <laughs> and that's it. But with everyone, and rightly so, Michael Carrick, the job he's done is fantastic. But Rob Edwards and Luton are quietly going about their business. Mm. Three points, that's it. They could be, they could see, get all make. See, when I grew up, Luton were top flight. Old first division, yeah. So I'm used to seeing you're well, not used by that been for a long time, but I'd love to see Luton back in it. I really would. Mm. You know, yesterday we talked about what size do you want to remain in the Premier League. Yeah. Luton's one of those clubs I'd like to see get back in the, in Premier, the Premier League. League. Yeah. yeah, I really would.